What's happening? Good Friday to all of you recording this today. So don't send your super chats. Don't send your super chats. I will not be able to get them, but make sure you do throw your comments in. Uh, talk to fellow Patriots fans about this podcast, about this game coming up on Sunday. I'm recording this because, of course, I'm in Virginia Beach, if you can't tell from the different background today. Uh, and I'm heading out with the wife a little bit later, so have to get out a little bit early. And uh, she took the day off, so you know how it is. So I am uh, recording this podcast today for all of you getting ready for uh, Drake May's debut. And I know I talked about this on Tuesday night in the Breaking News podcast. Uh, I hated the decision that the Patriots made to start Drake May this week, but here's the deal. I still love May. I believe he's a future franchise quarterback with special traits, and the decision is in the rearview mirror. And now it is time to be excited. It's time to be excited about the new era of Patriots football with Drake May as your starting quarterback. So that decision is past us. We will obviously evaluate what happens on Sunday. We will break it down. We will criticize when criticism is needed. We will credit where credit is needed. But I am excited to watch Drake May play football this Sunday. And I think many of you uh, are excited, if not all of you are excited as well. So let's start with Drake May's impact on this football game and some things that we might see with May starting instead of Jacoby Brissett. There is going to be, I think, a Drake May bump. I think the team will have a little bit of juice, so to speak, coming out on Sunday. I think they'll have a different kind of energy about them. Gerard Mayo talked about it this morning with the media, that there was a different energy at practice. And I think that's going to be legitimate. I do think at least for the first quarter, first half, there's going to be a little bit of extra spice from the Patriots, and they'll get that jump knowing that May is more talented than Brissett, knowing that he can do more than Brissett can. I think we'll see that team-wide. I think Jalen Polk uh, has a much better chance at succeeding in playing good football and making a difference, making an impact in this game on Sunday with May as his quarterback than Brissett as his quarterback. There is a no doubt connection between May and Polk that we saw during camp. And I think that will continue on Sunday. So I think Jalen Polk uh, could be in line for his best game as an NFL wide receiver on Sunday. That's, that's my expectation. That is my expectation that May and Polk will make some plays uh, as a tandem and Jalen Polk will make more of an impact on Sunday than we've seen him make uh, much of the first five weeks of this season. Now, as far as what May brings to the table, of course we know he is very athletic. He is much more athletic than Brissett, and the Patriots are going to utilize that. I think you could see some zone option. I think you could see the read option uh, from May. We saw that uh, back in the preseason with his touchdown rush. I think we'll see some of that on Sunday. We will see Alex Van Pelt hopefully utilize the athleticism of May uh, with that option. I think play-action bootleg, which is a big part of this offense, that the Patriots have not been able to run much because first, the offensive line, and secondly, Jacoby Brissett is not very good uh, throwing off the run. He's not very good throwing with the bootleg action. Drake May is much more comfortable in that situation, so I think we will see uh, a number of bootleg calls from Van Pelt to get May moving outside of the pocket and throwing on the run, trying to create those plays to the intermediate areas of the football field. Quarterback draws. I think we'll see him. Of course, May will extend plays. He will extend plays in a different way than Brissett. Uh, and he is, I think, much more dangerous than Brissett extending plays because of his ability to throw the football on the run. So we'll see some of those extensions of plays from uh, Drake May on Sunday. And he's going to scramble. He's going to run with the football. We know it. Hopefully he doesn't take too many unnecessary shots. But scrambling with the ball. Uh, his athleticism is a big part of his ability. Uh, Mike Reese wrote this week that, uh, you know, from 2022 to 2023, Drake May had 953 rushing yards on scrambles, which was second most in the FBS, trailing only Jaden Daniels. This is a guy who runs. He likes to run, and he is going to run on Sunday. More shotgun. I see Drake May on Sunday playing out of the shotgun much more than we saw Brissett. And again, it's about comfort level. Uh, that is May's, you know, comfortability running an offense is within the shotgun. He will be under center at times, but I think we'll see a lot less of that uh, with May than Brissett. So I am prepared to see May playing a lot out of the shotgun uh, against this Houston Texans defense, uh, again, because of that comfort level. 
It also allows him to think less. A lot of quick game, right? Get that snap, make the throw, move it down the field. Don't think as much because Houston will get into this. Uh, they will play games. They will especially play games on third down. And, you know, Evan Lazar wrote about Drake May and the shotgun. Uh, between the preseason and 12 dropbacks in the fourth quarter versus the Jets, uh, May only dropped back from under center on four of the 50 dropbacks. And Van Pelt talked about running the offense from under center being a major component of his system. The Patriots tied for sixth with an under center rate of 38% through five weeks. So the Patriots, Van Pelt, uh, they have their quarterback under center uh, the sixth most in the NFL. But with May, we didn't see a lot of that. So I would anticipate May being in shotgun an awful lot against Houston. Get ready for more risks. They call him a gunslinger, but get ready for more risks. Downfield throws. May, he's going to take those shots. He's going to make those throws. He is going to gamble. He's going to test the defense. That's what he does. The gunslinger mentality. So get ready for more risks. Downfield throws, tight window throws, uh, testing the middle of the football field. May loves throwing to the middle of the football field. Uh, so you'll, you'll see probably some throws in traffic. That might make you nervous. Uh, you won't see that from Brissett very often. May is going to take those chances. He's going to take those risks with the football uh, much more than Brissett will. Expect some high ceiling plays, some splash plays. There are going to be plays on Sunday that make you kind of shake your head and say, wow, I mean, that, that's, that's special what that guy just did. Again, he has special traits. There are going to be a few of those plays on Sunday that make you very happy. Uh, for the future of this team. But there are also going to be plays that leave you kind of scratching your head and going, what the hell was that? I can't believe he just made that throw. I can't believe he just did that. So you're going to see some of the sandlot. You're going to see the extension. You're going to see some of those special plays, the special traits, but you're also going to see some chaos. You're going to have some yikes moments. Expect some disasters on Sunday. That's just kind of what comes with uh, a rookie quarterback starting his first NFL game, uh, especially against this kind of defense that he's going to face. All right, what do we expect from Drake May on Sunday? Throw a comment in. Uh, tell me how excited you are. Tell me if you're nervous. Tell me if you're afraid of what May is going to face. Uh, throw those comments in. It helps the traffic, of course. Helps us beat that YouTube algorithm right in the face. So uh, may, throw those comments in, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well as you watch on YouTube. More thumbs, those are likes. More likes means more eyeballs. I always say that. So like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on demand, uh, Spotify, Apple Pods, you can also rate and review. Those five-star ratings uh, mean an awful lot. All right, let's get to the Patriots offense versus this Texans defense. And I start with the offensive line because for the first time all season, the Patriots will have the same five up front on Sunday that they had last weekend. So this has not happened all year long. They're going to have the same five guys out there. They're going to have Darian Lowe and Michael Jordan and uh, Nick Leverett and, of course, Owenu at right guard and Trey Jacobs at right tackle. You're going to have the same five guys as you did in that Miami game. And we talked about it after the Miami game. The offensive line, aside from Nick Leverett and Owenu, he had some weaknesses as well. But the tackles were actually pretty good. And Vidarian Lowe was really good. He was the highest graded uh, offensive tackle in football last week. Uh, when it comes to pass protection, he was really good. So you'll have Lowe and Jacobs back on the left and right side, respectively. Uh, that should help. That should help. The Patriots also went out and added Ben Brown as a center. Uh, he played a bunch of snaps in the preseason at center. Uh, he is going to be, I would imagine, on the active roster this weekend, so you have a little bit more depth and experience at that spot behind Leverett in case you have some problems. Houston, of course, coming into this game, they are ready for Drake May, and they're ready for Drake May because they just played Josh Allen last week. And as we got ready for the draft back in April, we kept talking about you know, May has that kind of Josh Allen ceiling, and he plays in very similar fashion as Allen. Well, Houston just played that guy last week, and Houston made Josh Allen's life a nightmare. So they're not going to have to change too much as far as preparation goes, getting ready for Drake May. They know what they're going to get, and they got a lot of it last week, but at a higher level with Allen. So uh, that that's a little bit concerning if you're the Patriots' offense. 
because, you know, these guys know mostly uh, what to do against this kind of quarterback, and it's fresh in their memory. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about this Texans defense. It, it's the best defense that the Patriots have faced. Uh, I, I don't think there's much question about that. San Francisco's defense uh, hasn't been as good as people expected it to be. Uh, the Jets defense is is okay, but DVOA-wise, they're kind of in the middle of the pack. Uh, Seattle's defense, some trickery, and that's not an easy defense to face, but this Houston defense I think is better than Seattle's defense. Miami's defense, not great. So this is the best defense that the Patriots have faced this year. The Texans, according to DVOA, are the third best defense in the NFL, the third best defense in the league. So this is a top-notch defensive football team. They're going to lose a couple guys. You know, Jimmy Ward looks like he's going to be out this weekend, but they're still just, they're really good. And what they will do is they'll mess around on third down. And this could be a trouble area for Drake May. First NFL start, uh, third down defense is going to be uh, tricky. D'Amico Ryans is going to throw a lot at May. I think Ryans is going to throw the kitchen sink at the young man and see how he reacts to that, right? So expect a lot of games up front, especially on third down uh, from D'Amico Ryans and the Texans defense. They've got to protect May. The Patriots have to protect Drake May on Sunday. And Drake May will protect himself at times with his athleticism, getting away from the pass rush. Uh, but, you know, Alex Van Pelt, he's going he's gonna to call some plays that get May away from some of that pressure. That's why I talked about the play-action bootlegs. Get him moving out of the pocket. Don't let him stand there, you know, just waiting to be crushed. Don't do it. Mix it up a little bit. The Texans, we talked about this on Tuesday night's Breaking News podcast. They are top in the NFL when it comes to pressure rate uh, at 42%. They're the fourth best team in football when it comes to team uh, pass rush win rate at 50%. So the pass rush is winning one out of every two uh, pass rushes, which is just crazy. You have Daniil Hunter. You have Will Anderson. Uh, both of those guys are in the top 13 in pass rush win rate coming off the edges. So it's going to be a tremendous challenge for Lowen Jacobs. Again, Lowen Jacobs played well last weekend, but Jalen Phillips out for the Dolphins. They did not face anybody uh, at the level of a Hunter or an Anderson, and they're going to face both of those guys on Sunday. So, you know, the O-line continuity after last week's performance uh, makes you feel pretty good. Uh, Leverett's got to play better. But, man, oh, man, this is going to be a big-time challenge for the Patriots' offensive line and a big-time challenge uh, for their tackles. Van Pelt just mentioned him. This is a mismatch. Van Pelt versus Ryans is a mismatch. D'Amico Ryans is a very good defensive coordinator. Uh, he's a very good play caller. We know we've had our doubts about Van Pelt. We've talked about Van Pelt an awful lot. I have ripped Van Pelt an awful lot, and justifiably so in my eyes. AVP versus Ryans is going to be a very, very difficult challenge for the Patriots. And I don't think you anticipate AVP winning that battle, but can he at least hold his own? We'll have to wait and see. And it all starts. It all starts with Ryans, that pass rush, and the fact that uh, Houston is not afraid to blitz. Houston is seventh in the NFL in blitz rate. They blitz 31% of the time, so almost on one-third of the snaps. This Houston defense will send an extra pass rusher. That's a lot. And, you know, when they faced Caleb Williams, a rookie earlier in the year, uh, they created almost 50% pressure rate against Williams. They sacked him like seven times. Uh, so I would expect that to be uh, pretty much what we see on Sunday. Of course, May might be able to get away from that pressure more than Williams, but Williams is pretty good at scrambling around, running around the pocket as well. So I don't think Houston changes their approach. I think they actually lean in on that approach, and I think they're going to blitz an awful lot. When you look at what teams have done against the Patriots and what they did before playing the Patriots, it's fascinating, and it's rather obvious. Defenses, they know they blitz New England. They know that that will be successful. When you look at the Jets, right, in weeks one and two, before they played the Patriots, the Jets had the eighth lowest uh, blitz rate in the NFL, right? They had the lowest blitz rate in the NFL. The Jets uh, blitz rate against the Patriots. So 
the blitz rate before the Patriots game, the Jets, 17.6. The blitz rate against the Patriots, 34.3. It's crazy, right? I mean, almost twice as much blitzing from the Jets against the Patriots than against the first two teams they faced in the season. So that gives you an idea. You look at the Niners. The Niners had the second lowest blitz rate in the NFL heading into the game against the Patriots. They blitzed only 14.1% of the time. Against the Patriots, they blitzed 33.3%. That's well over two times the amount of blitzes called by the Niners against the Patriots than what they were calling before that Patriots game. When you look at the Dolphins last week, the Dolphins going into the Patriots game, they blitzed 23% of the time, 22.9% of the time. That was the 11th lowest blitz rate in the league. So 22.9% before the Patriots. Last Sunday against the Patriots, the Dolphins blitzed 32.4% of the time. The last three teams that we've seen, they've blitzed the Patriots pretty much on one-third of the dropbacks, on one-third of the plays they have a chance, right? And, you know, when you look at the blitz rate, Houston is coming into this game at 31%. Those other teams, nobody was higher than the Dolphins at 22.9%. So if Houston loves to blitz, which they do, and they look at what teams have done, which is blitz heavily against this Patriots offensive line, what do you think is going to happen? I have to imagine that the Houston Texans are going to blitz a ton on Sunday. I would not be surprised if their blitz rate reaches 50%. I really wouldn't be surprised. Houston blitzed Caleb Williams on 41.7% of his dropbacks. Uh, so, you know, if you're betting the over-under, I'd say maybe 43.5, 44.5 on blitz rate. But again, I would not be surprised if they go really heavy with this and blitz the guy, you know, 50% of the time and blitz May 50% of the time. Uh, it probably will fall short of that, but I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, Mike Reese on Drake May at UNC. Facing pressure is something May was familiar with in two seasons at North Carolina. UNC allowed 409 pressures from 22 to 23, the most of any FBS school, according to ESPN research. Over that same span, May helped produce 23 touchdowns under pressure, which was the second most in the FBS behind Caleb Williams, who uh, produced 25 touchdowns. So May faced a lot of pressure in college. It's one of the reasons why Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo liked what they saw in Ben McAdoo and Van Pelt because he faced a lot of pressure and he did a pretty good job dealing with that pressure. At, you know, at certain times, he was able to get back up and face that adversity. They loved that about him. So he is somebody that he has felt the heat. He has been blitzed. He has been pressured an awful lot throughout his college career. Giardi, Mike Giardi on Drake May wrote about uh, the quarterback versus pressure. May had a 43.3% completion percentage, averaged 6.7 yards per attempt, had seven touchdowns, five, intercept five interceptions, and a 69 passer rating under pressure last year at UNC. So not spectacular numbers, but also not brutal numbers when you talk about, uh, you know, pressures. And, and blitzes and the amount of times Drake May was pressured. Uh, so there is going to be, I think, a level of, okay, I've seen this before. And you hope he doesn't get rattled because of it, right? Quick game. Quick game, quick game, quick game. And, and May has a quicker release than Brissett. Van Pelt needs to call the quick game. Again, he needs to move that pocket to make sure he is protecting Drake May. Uh, at all costs, do what you got to do. And also, don't allow Anderson and Hunter one-on-one -on -one rushes constantly throughout the game. This is something that Van Pelt has allowed with Brissett, and I think it's a big mistake. We talked about it uh, after the San Francisco game when Nick Bosa was lined up against Jacobs way too much one-on-one, -on -one, and it ended up killing the offense and killing Brissett. Van Pelt has to do everything that he can do to protect May, and that includes – Helping on the edges. Don't let Hunter and Anderson dominate this football game, Alex. You got to do something about it. So hopefully he does. Uh, can the Patriots run the football on Sunday? Does not look like Ramondre Stevenson is going to play. He hasn't practiced all week. He has a foot problem. And Andrew Callahan wrote about the run game in the Boston Herald today wrote about Ramondre and Antonio Gibson and, and how much those guys have been responsible for the production of the run game. 
Here's what Callahan wrote. Patriots averaged the second most yards after contact per run at three and a half. They've posted the fourth highest percentage of runs with a broken or missed tackle, and their backs are hitting the designed gap on barely 60% of their run plays, which is the second lowest percentage in the league. What does that mean? Callahan wraps it up and says, meaning Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson are making gains despite ineffective run blocking that does not allow plays to develop as intended. To that point, the Pats rank fourth worst in run blocking at Pro Football Focus, and they're in the bottom 10 by ESPN's run block win rate. Callahan writes, Stevenson and Gibson are not only carrying the ball, they're carrying the entire offense. And now it looks like you will not have Ramondre Stevenson in this game. A- another big time challenge for May. First NFL start against the third best NFL defense, against the best pass rush in the NFL when you look at pressure rate, a defense that blitzes a ton. And looking at what teams have done against the Patriots the last three weeks, upping their blitz, they're going to blitz a ton on Sunday, and you don't have your best running back to help you out. Stevenson is going to be out of this game, I would imagine. So now you're dealing with uh, one less weapon on an offense that doesn't have a ton of very good weapons. So, I mean, this is climbing up a hill for Drake May. Some might say climbing up Mount Everest. And the Patriots can't be afraid of that, though. They, they've got to run the football. They have to try to help the quarterback by running the football and alleviating some of that pressure. And also, if you run the football, you win time of possession, which means you keep C.J. Stroud off the field. And Houston's defense, as, as great as they are as they are against the pass and as much pressure as they create against the pass, when you look at their run defense, their run defense isn't great. So I feel like a broken record here, and I apologize for it, but again, I'm going to ask Alex Van Pelt to run the damn football. Even if you have Gibson and Hasty and Harris and you don't have Stevenson, run the football. When you look at Houston's run defense, fifth highest yards per carry at almost five yards a carry. So, I mean, they, they do play a bunch of stacked boxes, fourth highest stacked box percentage in the league. So I think you're going to see a very aggressive defense, uh, a lot of blitzing, a lot of games being played on third down, and I would imagine they're going to stack the box and try to take away the run from the Patriots. Now, the Patriots can play some games now uh, against run defenses because of May's ability to run the football. So that adds a dimension that Brissett did not have. That should help a little bit. But there are going to be opportunities against this Houston run defense if Van Pelt and the Patriots take advantage of them, and if Van Pelt calls enough runs. I hope he does. I want to see more snaps for Kendrick Bourne. He only had 16 against Miami. Of course, he's he's coming back from that ACL. Uh, Get him out there a little bit more. Uh, Can the wide receivers for the Pats win enough versus the man coverage for the Texans? Evan Lazar wrote, Houston ranks sixth in man coverage. They run man coverage 36.2% of the time, which is up from 18.9% last year or from Ryan's first season. Uh, Houston coming off a game where they held Josh Allen to 9 of 30. And Allen's efficiency, which was you know in the 46th percentile pretty much last week, was helped because he had four carries for 54 yards. Can Alex Van Pelt scheme guys open against this Houston man defense. And what I mean by that, can we see some bunch formations? Can we see some rub routes? Can we see, uh, you know, different looks than we've seen? Can we see even more motion at the snap? They had more motion at the snap last week against Miami. Can we see even more of that this week? Prepare your offense to deal with the man coverage of Houston and help them out with your scheme. A lot on Alex Van Pelt this week. More on Alex Van Pelt than Drake May. You got a rookie quarterback, no Ramondre Stevenson likely, going against this defense, man coverage, aggressive up front. You know what's going to happen here. You, you, you should know how Houston is going to approach this football game. And I hope to hell that it looks like Alex Van Pelt is prepared to deal with what Houston's going to do because that has not been the case this season. Go back to what your identity is supposed to be. Run the football. Use Drake May's ability to run with the football and work off of that. 
Are we going to see more screens? I hope so, especially with Hasty and Gibson uh, playing more of this more of this game with Stevenson likely out. I'd like to see some running back screens. I'd like to see some tight end screens. Manipulate this defense a little bit, Alex. Finish drives. Houston is 25th in red zone defense. All right, defensive preview coming up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Take a second of your time. That's all it takes to click that thumbs up on the YouTube screen here. And uh, throw a comment in. Excited for Drake May. Uh, do you believe that Alex Van Pelt will wake up and be a better play caller this weekend? Run the football more? Or are you pretty much done with him? We'll see. I, I said I wanted to see Alex Van Pelt with Drake May for a few games to see if that changes the play calling and if that makes this offense better. If we're talking about some of the same issues two, three weeks from now, I'm done with Van Pelt. So let's see what he has in store on Sunday. But don't forget to help us out by liking, commenting, subscribing, trying to get to 4,500 subscribers. And, of course, Spotify, Apple Pods, Peeps, uh, rate and review. All right, so let's get to the uh, Patriots defense against the Texans offense. Uh, can the Texans run? Now, Joe Mixon back at practice this week. Looks like he is likely going to play on Sunday. But this Houston offense, they have not been able to run the football at all. They haven't tried to run the football a lot. They're 24th in the league in run rate. And when you look at what they've done, well, they're 30, 30th. They're 30th in success rate in the league. They are 28th in run block win rate. So they're not running the football well. Major issue. Major issue. And if you're the Patriots, you got to continue to make sure that they don't run the football. What is going to impact this offense, of course, is Nico Collins being out. Uh, he's been, you know, put on the list, so he's going to be out for a few weeks with a hamstring. And Nico Collins has been this team's best receiver, but they still have weapons. Obviously, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, Xavier Hutchinson, That they've got some weapons. Uh, I want to see what DeMarcus Covington does. Does he play man or does he play zone? He's going to play both, right? You have to play both. But how much of each? We've seen that the Patriots have leaned heavily in on the zone defense, will they go more man? It's interesting because the Patriots, I think, are better in man because their defensive backs are pretty much their strongest part of their defense right now, especially Christian Gonzalez. I've been talking about playing more man for the last few weeks. The interesting part of that is that C.J. Stroud has been good against man coverage, but I still think the Patriots should play more man on Sunday than they've played this year. You know, let Christian Gonzalez work. Put him on Stephon Diggs. Put Jonathan Jones on Tank Dell. Let those guys go to work. Play some more man coverage. Uh, an issue, a question is Dalton Schultz. Pretty tough matchup for the Patriots. Talented tight end. And, you know, Kyle Duggar's been back at practice, so hopefully Duggar can play. But, of course, we've talked about Duggar. He hasn't been great in coverage, right? So can the Patriots stop Dalton Schultz from being, you know, that X factor and all of a sudden he goes for like 100 receiving yards and a touchdown, and you're like, man, that guy killed us. Can they defend Schultz? Can they do a good enough job against Schultz? Hopefully Duggar helps out because at least that will bring the depth in, and maybe you try Marte Mapu against Schultz a little bit, Jalen Hawkins a little bit. We'll see what the plan is. Uh, Houston's offensive line is beatable. Again, the run numbers aren't great, 30th in success rate, 28th in it in run blocking, according to ESPN's analytics. Uh, so they have not been able to block well for the run. And in pass protection, they have the eighth worst pressure rate given up, and they're 25th in pass blocking win rate. So you're talking about an offensive line that's had some major issues in the run game and protecting C.J. Stroud. Can the Patriots take advantage of that? Can they get the pass rush going? Is the offensive line healthy for Houston? Blake Fisher, uh, he replaced Titus Howard last week. Howard's had a hamstring injury. Uh, Laramie Tunsil, his ankle is dinged up. So how healthy are the two tackles for Houston? That's a question. And can the Patriots make those guys pay on the edge? Can Uche and Keon White make the tackles pay? Anthony Jennings on early downs. You look at uh, the defensive backs for the Pats. Tackling is going to be 
uh, a major, major proponent of this defensive game plan. And I know it might sound silly. Of course, tackling is always a, a major part of, of any defense, Nick. Duh. But especially going against this Houston offense. And again, Nico Collins is out. So some of this will change. But when you look at Houston, they have the second best yards after the catch in the NFL. Number two in Yak. So that extra yardage, you can't allow those chunk plays. Defensive backs, linebackers, they've got to wrap up. They've got to wrap up these Texans and make sure that, uh, you know, they're not getting all those extra yards. Houston also fifth in average target separation. Again, that will change with Nico Collins being out, but they've gotten separation. And when you look at it, this is just Bobby Slowick, who is a very respected offensive coordinator. You know, this is Bobby Slowick getting guys open. And, you know, the Patriots defensive backs, especially playing man, if you do play man, how much you play man, you've got to wrap up. You can't let these guys take a seven-yard pass and make it a 15-yard gain, 20-yard gain. You can't do it. You've got to be disciplined on the back end. Tackle, tackle, tackle. Can Keon White get going, by the way? Uh, we, we waxed poetic, and rightfully so, about Keon White the first couple weeks of the season, but he has really slowed down. And the Patriots, they can't deal with that, right? I mean, you can't live with Keon White not making plays. And Andrew Callahan wrote about this today. Uh, White produced by far the lowest PFF grade of his career against Miami last weekend. He has 11 tackles, four quarterback hits, and zero sacks since week two. So since week two, the last three games, he has 11 tackles total, Four quarterback hits, so barely a quarterback hit per game, and not a single sack. They need impact play Keon White Sunday. Can he get back on the tracks? I mean, the, the, the biggest thing he did last weekend was were those two penalties, those two personal foul penalties that just gift-wrapped 30 yards to the Dolphins' offense. Can Keon White play disciplined, and can he make – impact plays. Can he get back to the Keon White that we saw in weeks one and two? We'll see. It's vitally important for this defense and this team for him to get back to being that guy. Houston, fourth best red zone offense. Don't let him get to the 20-yard line. And that's why the, the yak and all the extra yardage do not let Houston get to the 20-yard line. They're the fourth best red zone offense in the league. They are very likely to finish uh, those red zone trips with touchdowns. So you got to you gotta button up, tighten up in between the 20s and don't allow them to just waltz down to the red zone because it'll be a long day. And the other thing about this Houston offense, they're the 10th best offense on third down. So Patriots have to win on third down. Got to win on third down. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Help us out. Time for uh, our prediction and what we feel is going to happen in this game. So the Texans, uh, they walk in on Sunday as six-and-a-half-point favorites. So they're, they're minus six-and-a-half. The over-under is 37-and-a-half. Uh, I think the Patriots, their, their offense will, will look like it has more life because of Drake May. It has a higher ceiling because of May. Uh, I think they'll move the ball better because of May. But this is a very tough situation for May. Incredibly difficult spot for Drake May. And... Uh, I think we should anticipate one or two turnovers from May. I think he'll turn the football over, which will set up Houston to score some points. Uh, I like Houston, and I like the over. I'm going 27-17. Texans win on Sunday. Uh, hopefully we see more good than bad from May. I'm excited to watch him play and start his first game as the Patriots QB1. I know all of you, or at least most of you, are excited to see him play on Sunday. Uh, but I do think the Patriots fall short. They lose 27-17, uh, and Houston ends up winning by 10. So I lay the points with Houston, and I take the over 37 and a half. I appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, enjoy your football weekend. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll be back on Monday at 3 o'clock uh, to recap what happened with Drake May and the Patriots against the Houston Texans. A very, very stiff challenge for the Pats. Everybody, again, enjoy your weekend. Be well. And don't forget to subscribe to help a brother out. Nick Cattleshell.